I'm very honored to introduce our next speaker, Congressman Lloyd Doggett. What a guy. One second. A little intro first. Um, so, he represents most of us here in Austin in the U.S. House of Representatives. Um, his presence here today is really quite amazing. Just three days ago, I got a call from his office uh, basically saying, we heard about your event and can Lloyd get in on that? And so, of course, I said, heck yeah. But really, I said, we'd be honored to have Congressman Doggett with us. So Congressman Doggett has continuously supported AmeriCorps throughout his term. Um, earlier this year, he helped to save service in this country by fighting to restore funding to AmeriCorps and see what he Well, thank you so much. You know, with uh, the good work that y'all are doing, uh, every week here in Central Texas is AmeriCorps Week. And as the signs show, whether it's community and schools or working with individuals with disabilities or Youth Build or uh, the uh, Austin Youth Works program or a dozen other programs that you're affiliated with, you're making a difference in the lives of our neighbors. Uh, I'm here, here a little late uh, in involvement in this program because of AmeriCorps, not only because I believe in you, but as to this specific event, because uh, I'm fortunate uh, in my office to have an AmeriCorps alum. And uh, Jackie Galvan, who's with camera in hand here, I want to salute. Jackie was... Jackie now continues to work in our office here every day, helping veterans, uh, helping uh, people who have problems with the government in any way, uh, discuss uh, how we can help them kind of cut through the red tape and the bureaucracy and be an advocate for them when they have a concern. Perhaps somebody who's trying to get their social security disability uh, or someone who has been in some way mistreated by the government that we can be an advocate for. Uh, I uh, also want to salute Andy Morgan. Uh, Andy and I have worked together in the past, and as you know, he is leading the effort here in the city uh, with uh, Councilmember Shade and Mayor Leffingwell to encourage uh, service. Uh, one of the stories that uh, Jackie told me about is probably not that uh, dissimilar from some of those that uh, you have, all of you who work in the early education and the literacy field, uh, also reminiscent of some stories. I'm fortunate to have my wife Libby uh, here with me this morning. Libby's field his early childhood, having begun as a first grade bilingual uh, teacher at Ortega over in uh, East Austin. But Jackie was telling me about an experience she had as an AmeriCorps worker uh, working with uh, the youngest kids that come over to Allison Elementary. And they were uh, reading, a, uh, using a little book, uh, probably like uh, some of those that you have, knowing that some of these kids are coming to school not really even knowing how to read a book, uh, but uh, how to open it and use it. Uh, but uh, as they looked at a sleepy child in the book and talked about where the child was sleeping, that the child wouldn't sleep in a chair, uh, he said, uh, oh, well, my brother does. And it brought home in a very real way the poverty that is all around us in little pockets and people that we sometimes overlook and are not assuring opportunities to that your program in working with one child at a time can make a difference. I deal with uh, millions and billions and now even trillions in the budget up in Washington. But you're making a difference one child, one individual, one program at a time. And I think that's truly important. We need more of that. I was pleased that a number of you came down in February uh, to my office uh, where Jackie works uh, down here on 8th Street to express your concerns about the cutbacks that were being proposed in Washington. Indeed, more than a cutback, essentially an elimination, uh, as was proposed in the Republican budget, of all of our AmeriCorps programs. And even uh, though we were able to prevent the elimination of that funding and the essential termination of AmeriCorps, the cuts are very substantial, millions of dollars less this year for AmeriCorps, less this year for VISTA and other volunteer service than we had last year. 
I'm all for eliminating unnecessary uh, uh, spending and any waste and inefficiency, but every one of those dollars that were cut for AmeriCorps means that there is some young person or not so young person around the country who does not get to engage in the kind of experience that you have of volunteering and serving and then using the education stipend to improve your own skills. And I say young people, I will tell you that a couple years ago, down in Schulenburg, Texas, which I represent, I helped uh, recognize a group of AmeriCorps workers who are all older than I am. Uh, they have a program of AmeriCorps focusing on uh, seniors and involving them with young people. So there are a wide range of programs across the country, and I think we need to have the funding so that every person who wants to volunteer in service and who has the discipline to do that and then go on and use that educational stipend, every person ought to have an opportunity to do that and give back to our country. Elliot Nashtad said, and what a great example of somebody who did the very type of service that you're doing, though maybe not near as uh, the music and fun of living in Austin, it sounds like, from his service, uh, but uh, who did that and continued to be involved and who now serves us so ably in the Texas legislature at a time of great service. Not all of us will have the opportunity of one that is very fortunate, in my case, to serve this community in Congress, heading back to Washington tomorrow afternoon, or as Elliot does, but every one of us as citizens can make a difference. There are a group, uh, someone just walked by as we were starting to hear a friend of mine from uh, East Austin on the way to the Save Our Schools rally, knowing that this legislature is about to decimate our public schools here. And so people are turning out today trying to have their say and speak out against the closing of our schools and the dismissal of good, competent teachers. Uh, we've got a city council runoff election uh, that is about to happen here in just a few weeks, taking time to participate in that. But particularly, though I know you do it in a non-political way, in talking with the parents and the co-workers that you're around, convincing them that their participation in this process can make a difference, that it can change their lives, that the future educational opportunities of their children, whether they will have a school open, whether they will have a teacher that cares, whether they will have a job to go to, those are the kind of issues that are at stake and when they don't participate because they think it makes no difference in the future of their lives and their families, then it's by default to some of the special interests that tend to dominate in this building and too much in Washington. We're about to have another major battle over the debt ceiling in Washington and then over the appropriation bills for next year. And the same people who wanted to eliminate AmeriCorps in February will be back there trying to cut us in the future. Stay involved make a difference. Don't accept those kind of cuts as a reality. Some of you, as I see this sign, are home builders working with Habitat and with other groups. Help us continue to be democracy builders. We will not accept a return to the past if we stay involved to build a better future. I share in the joy of your week. I thank you for the important service you're providing, and I look forward to continuing to have your advice about how we build a more progressive Texas and a better America. Thank you so much.